fiery horse with the speed of light, a clod of dust, and the hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. One, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I own Silver. Dodge City was new and raw, pulsing with life. The end of the Chisholm Trail, the destination of the great trail herds, driven up from Texas to be shipped to the eastern markets. All summer long, the town was crowded with cowboys and cattle buyers, gamblers and confidence men. And although Wild Bill Hickok was the marshal now, there was no controlling the sudden outbreaks of violence. It was a warm night in August, and the singing kid was standing at the bar in the Trails End Cafe humming to himself. Brock elbowed his way through the crowd to his side, and the men around them suddenly became silent. So you're tuning up for another concert, hmm? Nope. Just humming a little to myself. You know who I am? Your name's Brock. Mine's Jim Dillon. They call you the singing kid, don't they? Some folks do. You're the one who put Tom Walsh in the hospital. He's out now, isn't he? Well, I'm a friend of Tom, see? And anybody that draws on him has to draw on me. Tom drew first. I don't believe that. It's true. I'm calling you a liar. I'm not. You can ask anybody who saw the fight. I don't like your singing. I guess it is pretty no account. And I don't like your face. Neither do I. You're yellow, kid. You can't make me draw, Brock. Not first. You'll have to go for your gun before I make a move. And I aim to... It was the kid's gun that spoke and Brock's right arm that hung useless after the shot had been fired. Did you see that? Brock didn't more and get his gun out of his holster. The kid's light. Yeah. I'm sorry you made me do that, Brock. You're sorry, why, you dirty little coyote. Hey, I did, Marshal. You again, kid? It wasn't his fault, Marshal. Brock went for his gun first. Just your arm, Brock? Yeah. Too bad. What? Get out of here. Go see a duck. Well, how do you like it? Let me hey, through here. Kid, I'm Come taking on, you to jail. But, Bill, I no didn't arguments. go... Come on. Hey. 
The kid was locked up, but in less than two hours, Wild Bill Hickok, the marshal, returned to his cell and unlocked the door. Kid, I'm going to turn you loose on one condition. What's that, Bill? I've got a job that'll take you out of town for a while. I've got a job? I want you out of town. But why? You know I don't want to make any trouble. I'm an easy-going cuss if they leave me alone. Now, listen, kid. You've made yourself a reputation for being quick on the draw. You can take my word for it, that isn't healthy. You've made yourself the target for every would-be bad man around here. More and more, you're going to have to prove you're faster than they are. Because you're not a killer, because you won't draw first, one of them is going to get you. Now, will you take the job or shall I lock this door again and throw away the key? Well, all right. What is it? Come along. Can't you tell me what it's all about? You'll find out in a minute. There's a girl waiting in my office. She'll tell you what it's about. A girl? June Marlowe. You never saw a prettier one. Go on in. Miss June, this is Jim Dillon. They call him the singing kid. How do you do? Howdy, miss. Will you explain to him about the job? Yes. You see, I own the Bar M Ranch near San Antonio. You're a long way from home. I came here by stage and train so that I could sell my trail herd myself. It left San Antonio six weeks ago. Should be here by now. Yes, it should be, but it isn't. I have some notes to meet. And if I don't sell that herd by September 1st, I won't be able to meet them. I'll lose my ranch. Oh, that'd be tough. If something's happened, I want to find out. I want to find my cattle. So you want me to take a ride south and look for them? And I'm going with you. Huh? I can't just stay here and wait. It means too much to me. Oh, but the trail is no place... place for a girl. I realize the dangers. You'll be my bodyguard. You and two other men the marshal has vouched for. That is, if you care to take the job. I sure do. Good. Then it's settled. We'll start at once. Where are the other two, Marshal? They're waiting outside of town near the woods on Stony Creek. They know all about the situation. They'll meet you there. Good. There's something I should tell you. Uh, you're not hiring them. What? They simply want to help you. They're the best scouts in the West. But I must... No, Miss June. One of them wears a mask. A mask? And the other's name is Tonto. He's an Indian. A masked man and an Indian? Outlaws? Well, they're not outlaws. The masked man rides a white horse called Silver. Tonto. And Silver. Yeah, the kids heard of him. Oh, I sure have. Miss June, the masked man is the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Half an hour later, June and the kid rode out of town. The moon was full, and as they neared the woods, they could see the figure of the Lone Ranger, tall in the saddle, astride the great horse Silver. Tonto stood beside Scout at his side. Whoa, lady, whoa! whoa. whoa. It's Miss Marlowe, isn't it? Yes, sir. And this is the singing kid. I've heard about you, kid. Well, sir, all that trouble hasn't been my fault. I know that, too. Trouble? What sort of trouble? I was Oh, Miss uh, Marlowe. Wild Bill talked to me this afternoon. Since then, Tonto's found out something about your herd. Really? Not right. Good news? Uh, I'm afraid not. Oh. You know a man called Sam Evans? Why, yes. He's the one who I... I owe him some money. Well, he's in Dodge, and Tonto heard him talking in a cafe this evening. Ah, uh, I him talked to a fellow who just come in off trail. Evans asked about Bar M. Herd. He doesn't want it to reach here before the 1st of September. A feller tell Evans, everything fine, heard not move. Only three men in crew now, one sick. I don't understand. There were six men in the crew. There evidently aren't now. And if they're driving the herd at all, it's only a few miles a day. Where are they? Somewhere between the Red and the Canadian Rivers. That's a long way, isn't it? Are you ready for a hard ride? Of course. And we can make the Canadian by morning of the day after tomorrow. You just lead the way. Good, let's go. Right. One silver. Get up the march, come. Come. With the Lone Ranger in the lead, the little party headed south along the Chisholm Trail. They stopped only to rest their horses, 
and crossed the Cimarron at dawn. The masked man called a halt during the hottest hours of the day, and then on they rode again. The Canadian was reached the following morning, with their horses still fresh because of the Lone Ranger's care and thoughtfulness. Once on the other side of the river, he and Tonto ranged far to the east and the west of the trail, looking for a sign of the Bar M herd. It was late afternoon when they found it in a green valley near a swift flowing stream. There's Bart Crandall by the campfire. He's my foreman. Hello, Bart. Hello. Oh, 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 oh. What's the meaning of this, Miss June? You traveling with a masked man and an Indian. Don't you worry about them. They're friends of mine. And with their help, we're going to get this herd moving. That easy, big fella. Huh? Now, where's the rest of your crew? Joe's in the chuck wagon. Is he hurt bad, Al? Pretty bad. He's out of his head most of the time. What happened? We had a fight with some cows. He stopped a rifle bullet. Were the others... Have the other three been killed? No, ma'am. They quit. I don't believe it. That's right, miss. That's just what the cowards did. Miss June, while you're talking with Bart, Otto and I'll have a look at the man in the chuck wagon. Yes, please do. Come on, Otto. Danny, Fred, and Keith, they quit and took off a bunch of tall falls, man. The Lone Ranger and Toto climbed into the canvas-covered chuck wagon. In the dim interior, they could see a man lying on the floor. Who's there? Did I hear Miss Tune's voice? Or am I dreaming? You heard her voice all right, Joe. Better light the lantern, Toto. Ah, me do it. Where is she? She's talking to Bart right now. (laughs) Tell her that... Tell her... Not to believe anything he says. Here, lantern. Good. You're masked. It's all right, Joe. We're friends of Miss June's. We're going to help her get the herd to dodge. Take a look at the wound, Tonto. Tonto, do it. Somehow, you sound all right to me. In spite of the mask, you'll look out for her, won't you? You mean she's in some danger? Don't believe anything they say. Easy, easy. Ah, uh, this not look good. I may get stuff from saddlebag. Go ahead. Bart and Al think I've been unconscious ever since I was hit. I fooled them. I know what they're up to. Were you hit before the three men quit? Danny and Fred and Pete, they didn't quit. Bart fired him and drove him off at the point of a gun. Bart would have left me behind, but he figured he had a better way of getting rid of me. The buffaloes. What's that? What'll be left of this outfit when the buffalo hurt sweeps over it? <laughs> Let's fix him up plenty quick. He's unconscious, Toto. Not all right. I him not feel hurt when we use medicine. Toto, where are the buffalo, the big herd? Well, them east of here. Between the Red and the Canadian? Ah, me think so. And they're grazing this way? Me not know that. You've got to find out, Kimasabi. Well, what this feller say? Something about the buffalo herd sweeping over this outfit. There are hundreds of thousands in the big herd. They're close. If they cut us off before we reach the Canadian, there'd be no chance of keeping the cattle together. They'd be lost like drops of water in the ocean. Not right. Just as soon as you're finished with Joe, we'll find out where they are. Ah. The sun had set, but the western sky was still a blaze of purple and red when the Lone Ranger and Tonto reined up at the top of a long slope only five miles from camp. And there, an awe-inspiring sight met their gaze. Buffalo, hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions. As far as the eyes could see, to the north, the south, and the east, the great shaggy beasts covered the plain. And they're heading west. And them bed down for night soon now. But they'll be crossing the Chisholm Trail by noon tomorrow. We can't wait, Toto. Our only chance to get across the Canadian is to start our drive tonight. Get him up, Scout! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger and Toto raced back to the trail camp after scouting the buffalo herd and found June, the singing kid, Bart and Al, sitting around the campfire eating their evening meal. Oh, 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 we're going to have to start our drive tonight. Tonight? That's crazy. Keep your opinions to yourself, Bart. From now on, you're taking orders. Or we'll have all the proof we need that you've deliberately tried to keep this herd from reaching Dodge City. You can't talk that way to Whatever me. Whatever he says goes, Bart. He's in charge from now on. Then I quit. So do I. Oh, no, you don't. Neither of you do. You're both going to work as hard as any of the rest of us. Who's going to make me? I am. Well... Well, naturally, I want to help Miss June all I can. Well, that's better. But tonight... I think you know as well as I do that the big herd of buffalo is less than ten miles from here and moving in this direction. Is that so bad? The big herd? If you've never seen it, Miss June, you have no idea how large it is. I could show you, but there isn't time even for that. It covers the whole plain from the Red River to the Canadian. And once it sweeps across this trail, we'd never be able to drive through it. We may be too late as it is, but we'll have to make the try anyway. To save your cattle, we must reach the river before noon tomorrow. Is there any chance? Yes, I believe so. Bart. Yeah? You and I'll catch yourselves some mounts and get them saddled. Right. Come on, Al. Kid. Yeah. Out and I'll ride the point. I'll put Bart and Al on the flanks. You bring up the rear to watch the strays. Right. Get yourself a fresh horse now. I'm on my way. Miss June, can you drive the chuck wagon? Oh, of course. I'll get the horses harnessed for you. We can't waste a minute. In less than half an hour, the herd was moving. And once underway, the Lone Ranger and Tonto at the point kept the leaders moving fast. On and on through the night, heading north for the banks of the Canadian River. Every now and then, the masked man rode to the rear to make sure the pace wasn't too fast for the chuck wagon and that the kid was able to handle the strays. Take it up, Silver. Easy now, boy. Easy. All right, Miss June. Fine. How about Joe? Believe it or not, he's gone to sleep. Good enough. But we've been talking... It looks to me as if Bart and Al have sold out to Sam Evans. Joe told you that the other men didn't quit? Oh, yes, and other things. I think Bart and Al wanted the buffalo herd to catch the cattle. They intended to save their own skins and leave Joe to die. We'll deal with them when we get to Dodge City. In the meantime, we'll make them work. You're looking at the sky. Anything wrong? Starting over. Maybe a storm. Will that make much difference? If it's a bad one, it might stampede the buffalo. Oh, let's hope it holds off. I am. Everything all right, kid? Aye. Good enough. I want silver. At last the dawn broke, but there was no sun. Thunderheads were banked above the plain. The banks of the river could be seen in the distance. And then suddenly, the first lightning flashed to the ground. It looked plenty bad, Kimis Hobby. Yes, Toto. It not rain, but there be plenty lightning. Much thunder. That bolt hit somewhere near the buffaloes. Toto afraid them stampede. Me not sure. Maybe hear them run now. And there's only one thing to do. Stampede the cattle. Make them run too. I'll ride back and warn the kid. One, two, three. Kid, the buffaloes are coming this way at a run. As soon as I get back to the point, start shooting. They've got to stampede the cattle and make them run. Right. Stay close to the chuck wagon. Watch out for Miss June. I will. One, two, three. From the rear of the herd, the kid's six-gun rang out. The longhorns started to run, faster and faster. A great red and white triangle sweeping across the plain toward the river. The dark gray sky was cut by jagged streaks of lightning. Thunder crashed. The terror-stricken cattle tried to break for the west, but the lone ranger and the great horse, Silver, held the point on that side. No, sir, Silver. Over. Guide them back. And let them break the point. On they raced toward the river. Two thousand head of cattle. Behind them, June drove the chuck wagon at breakneck speed. Joe! Yes? I'm sorry I can't drive any slower. Don't worry about me. I can see a cloud of dust to the east. It's the buffalo. 
They're getting close to every minute. How about the river? We're getting there. Drive on. Get up. Get up there. A herd of 2,000 cattle, but small compared with a black sea that threatened to engulf it. The Longhorns never faltered. Except for Silver and Scout, the horses found it difficult to keep up with them. Minutes that seemed hours passed, and then the ground began to slope toward the river. The sun broke through the clouds and gilded the surface of the water just ahead. We've made it, Silver. Hello. Hey. The cattle will try to stop at the bank. We'll have to drive them across. That's right. The low banks of the river were reached. The Lone Ranger and Tonto drove the leaders on. The river was wide but shallow, and nowhere did they lose their footing. They climbed the bank on the far side and moved on into the green grass beyond. But the masked man had returned to the south shore, and now he was riding beside the chuck wagon as June guided it through the stream. At last, it creaked and rattled its way up the far bank. And at that moment, the leaders of the buffalo herd thundered by on the south shore of the river. The race had been won. It was a week later that Bart and Al knocked on the door of Sam Evans' room in Dodge City's Palace Hotel. What are you going to say to him? What can we say? We've got to tell him what happened. He won't like it. I don't either. What the... What are you two doing here? Don't tell me you brought the Bar M herd in a full week before the first. We didn't do it. Come on inside. Now let's have it. What's the idea? June Marlowe met us out on the trail. She brought three men with her. One of them was a young guy they called the Singing Kid. Then there was an hombre that wore a mask and an Indian. They took charge. There was nothing we could do to stop them from driving on to Dodge. You had guns, didn't you? Yeah, but... Scared to use them, huh? That's right, Sam. We were scared to pull any of that stuff. The kid had a draw like greased lightning. And the masked man made him look slow. All right, all right. So the herd's here. Where? In the corrals outside of town. Has June done anything about selling it? Yeah, there was a cattle buyer named Harriman out there this afternoon. He made his count and bought them. How many head? Close to 2,000. That means she'll get about $30,000. She can pay off my notes and I lose my chance of getting the Bar M Ranch. You lose, too. I know. How does it feel to lose $5,000? It don't feel good. Wait a minute. Has June got the cash yet? She's coming into Harriman's office tonight to sign a bill of sale and pick it up. What time? Nine o'clock. And that's just an hour from now. Why don't you go after that 30,000, boys? She'll have someone with her. A kid or... You wouldn't have to beat him to the draw if you were waiting in the shadows where he could see them and they couldn't see you. There's too many people in Dodge. Not around Harriman's office. It's away from the center of town. Maybe we couldn't find it. I'll show you where it is. I'll go with you. Thirty thousand dollars. Fifteen thousand apiece. What do you say? Uh, what do you say, Al? If it's dark enough... It's plenty dark in that section of town. I wouldn't mind taking a shot at that kid. And I don't owe the girl anything. She hasn't told me yet, but I know she's going to fire me. Make the kid a foreman, probably. All that money. And you'll still be foreman if I get the ranch, Bart. Foreman and manager with the share of the profits. Sam, it's a deal. It was the dark of the moon, and when the three men left the glare of the cafes behind them and entered the district where the offices of the cattle buyers were located, they could only see a few feet in front of them. But Evans knew his way, and before long, they saw the single light in Harriman's office. The sound of their footsteps ceased. A few minutes later, a boy and a girl rode up to the office, dismounted, and went inside. The dark street was silent for the next ten minutes. Then June and the kid stepped out onto the porch in front of the office. It's been a pleasure to do business with you, Mr. Harriman. Goodbye, sir. Thank you very much. Now what? Back to camp? Sam Evans is somewhere in town. What I'd really like to do is find him and pay him off tonight. We can try it. 
And I want to pay Bart and Al off, too, and get rid of them. Good. Come on. Now's your chance. They're in the light. Shoot! Dump those guns. They're covered. Hey, here. There's a man across the street. I heard the masked man's voice. Better get back inside. No. But... Masked man and the marshal. And Bart and Al and Sam Evans. I'm not even armed. You can't arrest me. We heard you give the order to shoot. That isn't all I heard you say. These two have been followed ever since they came into town. I followed them upstairs at the hotel. And I was in a room next to yours when you persuaded them to shoot and rob Miss Marlowe and the kid. What? Yes, Miss June. We've been waiting for you here. But we were only a few steps away. I didn't hear anybody following us. We didn't intend you to. Kimasabi, here's Silver. Oh, thanks, Toto. Well, Marshal, there's just one more thing. What's that? You have your prisoners, but you don't want the kid to stay around Dodge City, do you? I'm not going to allow it. Don't you think he'd make a good foreman, Miss June? I do. Don't you think it would be a good idea, kid? I do. <laughs> Almost sounds like a wedding. <laughs> well, we're both going to change our names. You're both going to... The kid's going to be James Arthur Dillon from now on. And naturally, I'll be Mrs. James Arthur Dillon. <laughs> naturally. Well, my congratulations and best wishes to you both. Thank you. Thanks, mister. Easy, big fella. Adios. Adios, Adios. kid. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Now you three can start moving. The fine state of affairs when the law is hand in glove with outlaws and honest ranchers like me go to jail. <laughs> honest ranchers. Yeah, that masked man is no outlaw. And lawmen like me are plenty glad to have him around to put honest ranchers like you where they belong. And just to set you straight, mister, you ought to know that that was the Lone Ranger. I you This is a product of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. A part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Mm -hmm.